I just installed Windows 10 on my main computer. Okay, well, before you freak out and you unsubscribe, just, just bear with me a second. Just give me a chance to explain you why. Hey, Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online, and today we are gonna talk about computers. We're gonna talk about Mac, Windows, and Hackintosh. Yeah, Hackintosh. If you don't know what a Hackintosh is, it's basically Mac OS installed on a PC-based system. So again, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to click on the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And don't forget to like and share at the same time. Now let me explain to you why I'm now on Windows 10. Five years ago, I bought myself a new computer. I was running Windows 7 at the time. A year after that, I decided to try out the Hackintosh system. I already had a MacBook Pro as a laptop that I didn't want to use as my main studio computer and I didn't have the budget to invest into a Mac machine for my studio. So that's why I built up a new PC instead. I ran uh, Windows 7 on it for a year and then I decided to switch to Hackintosh. So I installed Mavericks at the time on my system and it worked well. Now, building a Hackintosh is not that easy, okay? It's not like installing Windows or installing Mac OS on a Mac. That is pretty easy, but installing a Hackintosh needs a lot of research and a lot of uh, commitment, I must say, because there's a lot of tweaks to do while installing the system. You need to do the correct research according to the, uh, the components you have on your system. So it is very complicated and not that user friendly, but when everything is well installed, it works like a charm. I've been working on that Hackintosh for the past four years. Uh, recording, mixing, doing all music production related stuff on that system and it worked well. So no complaints about that. But lately I've been having a bit of trouble just because of all the e software updates um, and the fact that when you install a, uh, uh, a Mac OS on a Hackintosh machine, you're kind of stuck with that version of the OS for a while, you know, because you just can't upgrade it as uh, you would do on a regular machine. Okay, look, for example, if you were to upgrade your, uh, your, your Hackintosh machine like you would on a regular Mac, um, actually you would reboot your computer and uh, your computer would just not reboot, okay? So that's basically it. You, you're not gonna be able to get back into your Mac partition. So you need to be careful with that. You need to deactivate the uh, automatic updates and stuff within, uh, within Mac OS. Um, so that's what I did. Because yeah, because at first that happened to me, you know, it just upgraded by itself and I wasn't able to get back in. So basically with the software updates and so on, um, you know, I find that it's time for me to upgrade. And I tried for the past few months to, uh, uh, to look into uh, upgrading everything to High Sierra. So upgrading on the, uh, uh, in the Hackintosh world means basically reinstalling everything, okay? So again, you go back and do your research because with a new OS version, it's you know, not the same type of tweaks you need to do to, uh, to be able to install um, Mac OS on your uh, PC, okay? So I did try to install High Sierra on my machine with no success, it didn't work out. And uh, the thing with that, you can spend so much time if you don't uh, check that out, you know? So at some point I just told myself, maybe I should just install Windows until I buy myself a new, uh, a new PC. And maybe later on I could reinstall their Hackintosh system. Uh, so I went and downloaded uh, Windows and I installed the Windows 10 installer on that uh, USB key. Um, for a weird reason, it didn't work, so I just needed to reformat the USB drive and uh, reinstall that again. And the second time around, it worked, so I was able to install Windows 10 on a second hard drive, not on the same hard drive as my Hackintosh. But the thing is, to get into my Hackintosh partition, I needed to boot with that key, that USB key. That was my boot key. There was a way to, uh, to boot directly from the hard drive into my uh, Mac OS, but I just didn't, you know, take the time to tweak that up. It worked well with the USB key, so this is what I did. I just, uh, for the past four years, booted into my system with that key. So, getting back to Windows. Second time around, it worked. I was able to install Windows on my machine with that USB key to realize that the USB key I used to install the uh, Windows 10 installer was my Hackintosh boot key. Oh, no, 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 no. I freaked out. Thank God I was finished with the mix and mastering of my client's album, but I still need to get back into that album, you know, to, 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 uh, to export and bounce some playbacks. So yeah, I freaked out big time because now there was no way for me to get back into my Mac partition. 
and get back to my work. I didn't want to waste any time just to try to recreate that boot disk or trying to find a solution. There must be a solution somewhere to just to, to, to boot directly from that drive. Uh, so I just decided to not waste any more time researching on that and just go on with Windows 10. Here I am. I installed everything on Windows 10, Cubase, all of my plugins and stuff, and I was just hoping to get to the project I was just mixing. And when it was the time to open my client's mix project, everything opened up correctly. Everything was in place. All the plugins that I worked on were accessible with the same settings. It didn't change anything. That was a relief, being able to open my old session from a different OS with everything intact. Man, I was like so happy. So all of my mix plugins are installed and it gave me the chance just to just to install the plugins that I work with. Over the years, it just installed so many things. So in a way, it's good to strip that down, you know, to just the stuff you need. Now, I have to be honest, I was a bit nervous. Reason is, years ago, I tried to do it the other way around by opening a Windows-based a Cubase session on Mac and that didn't work out that well. A lot of the plugins didn't open and just reset it themselves into the, uh, the default settings, but none of that happened this time. I'm relieved, I'm happy, and from that point on, I'm gonna continue working on a Windows machine. For now, I'll see how that goes. I hope for the best. And there's, you know, there's no reasons why it shouldn't work well, you know? Uh, it's not like it was years ago. Like if you go back 10, 15 years ago, yeah, maybe that that time was like a big difference between a Mac system and a PC system. Uh, but, you know, these days, you know, Windows 10 is a very good system. I have like a lot of friends that work uh, directly into Windows 10 for music production and they don't have any problems. Um, you know, their system works very smoothly. So um, I'm looking forward to it, to be honest. You know, I don't dislike Windows at all. And I'm not saying no on getting back on a Hackintosh machine. But now if you ask me, why don't you buy yourself a Mac? You know, I have a big problem with Apple. Just the fact that everything is built in without the option of upgrading and not being able to, to, to build your own custom machine, that bugs me a lot. Now, the price of a Mac is way too expensive. You can build yourself uh, the same equivalent type of machine for maybe half the price, you know, if you do it on PC. Um, so, no, I don't think I'm going to go forward in the future to buy an, an Apple machine for my studio. I, uh, if I go back on the Mac system, it's going to be again uh, under Hackintosh. Uh, or else I'm just going to stay on, on Windows. So, if you see future tutorials that I do on Windows, you'll understand why. Okay, But that doesn't mean it's always going to be on Windows, because I still have my MacBook Pro where Cubase is installed. So, my question for you, are you working on Mac? PC or Hackintosh and how that goes for you. Leave your questions and comments down below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to share and like. All right, guys, until next time, see you.